right, hello, hello, my friends. Today is a very, very good day. You know why it is. You know why it is. It's right behind me. We are going to be talking all about this fantastic 1949 Ford F1 custom pickup truck, and you know I'm going to enjoy it. So, let's do it. George Finley for letting me make a video on this lovely F1. Uh, he's a friend, he's a mentor, and he lets me make car videos on all his cars. So thanks a lot, George. All right. Now, if you're familiar with this channel, awesome. Welcome back. Yep. Yeah. If you're not, well, what we do here is pretty much we make classic car videos. I am really into automotive history, and if you like that kind of stuff too, well then press the subscribe button wherever that button might be. Now, today we get to talk all about, you and me get to talk all about this 1949 Ford F1 custom pickup truck. It has had a complete off-body restoration and is powered by a Ford flathead V8. <gasps> but before I get too deep and I start talking your little ears off, let's go ahead and take a spin around the vehicle. of the times. Let's talk about what the late 40s looked like. Now, keep in mind, World War II did end in 1945, okay? So, Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated. The Soviet Union detonated their first atomic bomb. Baby boomers were starting to pop out, as well as television sets. That's right. They were selling over 100,000 TV sets a week. That's definitely going to change the pattern of society for sure. The World Health Organization was formed. Howdy Doody was on the air. And a fact that's not exactly relevant, but I still wanted to tell you because I thought it was interesting, Velcro was invented. And another interesting little thing that was going on in the automotive scene at this time, United Auto Workers Union succeeded in linking their pay to the cost of living index with General Motors. So that's a big one for the working man. All right, so like I said, 1948 is when they make the debut of the F1. Now, just a year before then, in 1947, Henry Ford, the senior, the original, the OG, passed away. And four years before then, in 1943, his son, Edsel Ford, had passed away. Now, Edsel was a super talented guy. He was a bit of a visionary. He was nothing like his father, to be honest. And I kind of wonder if he hadn't passed away so soon and untimely, where would he have taken Ford Motor Company? Something to think about. Now, who at that point was at the helm of Ford Motor Company? No other than the deuce, Henry Ford II. Now, this first generation F series was also known as the Ford Bonus Built. An interesting thing to note with the introduction of the S-Series is that it really marks the divergence between Ford's car and Ford's truck divisions, okay? With these trucks, they were actually designing and manufacturing chassis specifically for truck use. 
The F-Series was sold in eight different weight ratings with pickup truck, panel truck, cab over engine, conventional truck, and school bus chassis body styles, panel vans, bear and cow chassis, and marked the entry, really, of Ford into the medium and heavy duty truck segment. All right, so cool fact here is that the first generation F1 series were the only Ford truck that was entirely powered by the flathead V6 and V8 engines. Kind of neat. All right, let's talk a little bit about the 1949 Ford F1 that's right behind me. It has undergone a complete off-body restoration to stock specifications, and it was featured in the Peterson Museum. Yeah, that museum. Kind of a big deal. Flathead V8 got a power boost from period-specific speed equipment. Offenhauser aluminum cylinder heads, Edelbrock intake manifold, dual Stromberg 97 two-barrel carbs, and Fenton headers. Now, why is it called a flathead or a flatty? Well, because the cylinder heads are flat, that's why. And back in 1932, when this engine first came on the scene, there were not a lot of overhead valve engines being manufactured. So Ford first put this engine in the Model 18. An interesting little fact, this was the first independently designed and built V8 engine that Ford had made for mass production. And the flathead was produced for over 21 years and still stands as one of Ford's most important developments. It made it on Ward's list of best engines of the 20th century and is a favorite of classic car hobbyists and hot rodders. God, I love, 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 wooden accents in the bed truck. Look at that. Just, this is absolutely adorable. It'll put a smile on your face, I'll tell you that much. We interrupt this program to bring you white walls. Guys, let's go ahead and take a look at this fantastic interior. It's just, yeah. It's Hello, okay, I'm gonna turn it around. Look at that. I mean, it's just really well done. This restoration, just perfection. Let me get on in here. Yeah, oh, that's nice. Looks real fitting with my Adidas. There we go. Now, talk about absolutely simplistic cluster gauge. Fuel, oil, temperature, and your battery. Sweet. You know what? I'm just too used to being in classic cars. I'm going to be ruined for the rest of my life if I'm never around them. <laughs> That'll never happen. I hope you had a blast because obviously I did. This is my jam. It is. I'm very lucky to have grown up around classic cars and for the passion for classic cars to have been imparted on me. So ah, thank goodness. Now, if you like this or you want to learn more about classic car history or anything like that, go ahead and press the subscribe button because I promise you there will be more of these car videos. And there's already been a lot of these car videos, to be honest. Anything I can get my hands on, I'll tell you the history about it. It's my thing. Some of you from the South may have been noticing that I am wearing one rad Whataburger hat. You can get it at the cchooks.com. It's pretty pimp. They gave this to me, which was really nice of them. So I wear it all the time. Thanks, guys. And on that note, see you next time. Bye.